Hi guys, I thought I should uh, get some podcasts together for these next few things we're doing to finish off our term. And that's not responding. Give me the full screen, come on. There we go, that's better. So of course, we're looking at sensing and responding. We're looking at nerves and hormones and finishing with the brain. So first of all, let's have a look at the nervous system. And we've started talking about this last week. Essentially, all organisms need to sense their internal environment and their external environment. So for a living thing, we have the outside world, outside of our epidermis, so that covering, um, and you're used to those ideas, you know, eyes, ears, nose, tongue, skin. We use all these things to sense our outside world. That information gets sent through to our central nervous system and our brain, and we need to decide, hmm, what do we want to do with that information? Is it safe? Is it unsafe? Do I need to run? Do I need to do whatever? But at the same time, we're also looking at the complex internal operations of our body and looking at our glucose levels and our carbon dioxide and our O2 and our water and temperature and all sorts of things need to be monitored all the time. And so there's a whole lot of receptors inside our body which are using information, seeing information through the brain and we're making decisions about what do we do about this? Is it dangerous? Do I need to respond? Is it not dangerous? I can ignore it. And your brain's basically doing this thousands of times every second as all these little receptors receive heaps and heaps of information. Uh, one of my, hang on, actually I'll move on. Um, so, our nervous system, now this is only in complex animals, we don't find it in simple animals, although some do have nerves, they're not as systematic as ours, and of course plants have no nerves. So in our central nervous system, that's the brain and the nerves that run down our spinal cord called the notochord, um, we have a processing plant. It's our CPU, if you like. So information comes into it from the peripheral nervous system, decisions are made, and then information sent out via the peripheral nervous system to decide what to do. So some of this happens all by itself. <sighs> we don't think to breathe. Our breathing just happens. Our brain allow, controls our, our heart, but it keeps it beating all the time. There's things we do we don't have to think about, and other things we need to think about. So we have receptors, and so eyes and skin and ears are all receptors. We have receptors inside our body too for glucose and things. And we have effectors, and effectors can be uh, muscle, so we contract and take that, hot, that um, hand away from a hot plate. Or we might cause um, insulin to be released and glucose to be taken up and the glucose level in our body is uh, reduced. So effectors can be glands that put out hormones, or they can be muscles. And they, they create a response that's appropriate to the, um, the information that's been received. So here's that uh, idea of the central nervous system. We have a brain here. In, deep inside the brain we have hypothalamus which controls all of the um, hormones. So it's connected into the brain, so it's connected into the nervous system. And then right down our spine, this notochord, this nerve cord, all the way along, that then connects into all these nerves that run down our arms and down our legs, out to all our organs, considering what needs to be happening. So we have peripheral nerves that go from your spinal cord to arms, hands, feet, and these things are called autonomic, and they run to our organs, and a lot of them are actually just operating all the time anyway. We don't have to think about them too much. Um, nerve cells, we have lots of different types of nerve cells, about seven or eight, I think, um, major types. But essentially, we have Sensory nerves, nerves that bring information from our, um, our receptors to the central nervous system, and then motor nerves, nerves which carry information from the central nervous system back out to those muscles and glands and organs and determine what's going to happen next. And of course, this is a sort of thing you're trying to make for your, um, your modeling, creating a model like this with all those parts in it, explain what the parts does, just sort of add for the uh, homework you've got. Um, so, oh, here's, <laughs> look at that. there's another area for the homework, I forgot about that. Um, so there are many types of nerve cell, but essentially they've all got the same basic structure. They've got a cell body, this area here with a nucleus inside it, and lots of mitochondria because there's lots of, lots of energy being used all the time, and there's Golgi apparatus and uh, interplastic reticulum and ribosomes and all those sort of things are still found because it's still a cell. We have dendrites reaching out, and they could be reaching out to the back of the eye, they could be reaching out to another nerve. Then the axon runs down the middle of this nerve, out to these axon endings, 
and these terminals might connect to a muscle, they might connect to a gland, or they might just connect to the next nerve in the system. And then wrapped around all of these, this axon, are cells called Schwann cells, and they make a product called myelin sheath, which is very fatty in nature, and it insulates these little areas here, the bits between them are called the nodes of Ranvier. We won't write too much about those at this stage, but uh, they aren't continuous, they form blocks, and they insulate that so that the message can run down here and not go sideways, remembering that inside your body you're all wet. So there's plenty of water to take an electrical message somewhere else. I'm sorry, I'm resting this on my knees and I'm rocking back and forward, sorry. Um, and then at the end we have these synapses. So we get to the end of the, the uh, axon and you've got to send a chemical message to whatever's next. So electrical message runs down the axon and then out the synapse we send some neurotransmitters. So remember your homework at the moment is to, to create some sort of representation, be it physical or um, a poster or something on you know, uh, an animation, that sort of thing. Um, you're all aware of reflexes and we're going to test our reflexes uh, this week in class. Um, and you also your reaction times. A lot of things um, are based on what's called a reflex arc. We don't think too much about them. If you put your hand down on a hot object, you really don't want to be wasting time having your brain, not that it would take very long, but still having your brain think, hmm, that's hot. I should remove my hand. Ouch. You really want that touch to go, oh, and reflect straight away. So there's our receptor hitting the hot plate, sends a message on a sensory nerve into this into the central nervous system, but into the um, spine. There's an interneuron on there connecting out to the motor nerve, which runs out to that muscle and causes the hand to let go. So it's automatic. It's protective. All those things are protective. You're blinking. Um, of course, I'm not going to do it because I'm doing it to myself, so I can't. Tickling, you can't tickle yourself for the same reason, but those sort of responses are protective. Um, and so they don't need a lot of processing time. They're straight into the central nervous system, into the spine, and straight out again, and a, a response is made. Of course, we also have our senses. We're going to do an eye dissection uh, this week, and we'll do a brain dissection a bit later. So we're looking at all these parts of the eye. The light comes through the lens and is um, focused on the back of the eye. There's a little blind spot where the optic nerve joins in. We might go see if we can find our blind spots. Um, it's quite doable. We'll have a little play with that. We're going to cut up an eye and see if we can find all these things and find that lens, find all these parts. But the optic nerve, really big, thick nerve, as you'll see when we um, cut it off the eyeball, but it's only short, straight into the brain. The brain's just right behind the eye. So lots of nerve, nerve uh, tissue rain down it because you're getting lots and lots of light information all the time. That's why using these computers actually is quite tiring and why we suggest really that before you go to sleep at night, you should probably have a time away from this computer just to give your eyes some rest. Um, so we're going to look at what uh, our eye does with that. Um, we also have the ear. So there's the auditory canal. So it catches sound waves, so vibrations, channels them down here, hits the eardrum, which then um, passes this information along the um, three little bones here, the malus, incus, and stapes, which puts that into the cochlea and causes the cochlea, all these little hairs in the cochlea to be um, vibrated. And so depending on the frequency of the vibration itself that's coming into the ear, will depend on which one of these hairs you actually stimulate. And then the auditory nerve, again, very close to the brain, will take the information for the brain to, to work out. So of course, you're listening to me now, that's what's happening. Those vibrations that are being made by your speaker are traveling down here to the eardrum through these three bones, causing the cochlea to vibrate and a message to be sent out to the auditory nerve. And all that's being decoded for you without even thinking about it. The nose also contains chemoreceptors. So across the top of the, the palate here. Um, and these work in conjunction with chemoreceptors in the mouth. Which should be next. Oh no, I didn't put the mouth in. Um, oh, of course it's down here already. So we have chemoreceptors in both these areas and they receive chemical information, smells and tastes, and work out whether or not they send the information to the brain for the brain to work out whether or not this is a good thing to be putting in my mouth, that's a good smell I should be smelling, or should I be moving away or spitting it out. Um, and of course we also have our skin, and the skin does a lot of work 
getting information about heat and cold, pain, touch, um, all those sorts of things. You're going to design an experiment. Now here I've sort of limited it, but I think we can open that right up. So you're going to carry out an experiment into our um, sensors. So you can look at uh, things like, do boys have better um, sense of smell than girls or vice versa? Do you need to be able to smell food to taste it? So if you block the nose off, do we lose some of our sense of smell, our sense of taste? Um, so looking at those sort of ideas, you can also look at pain, and we talked about pain in class the other week. We can look at testing for who feels pain the most. Um, Dom Angelico, who's in year 12 now, year 12, yeah, he did a fantastic project when he was in year nine doing this course, looking at um, who feels more fear by getting a particularly scary video game and playing to people and, and recording their reactions to particular uh, scenarios. Um, I failed to play it because I didn't know how to play the game, but anyway, but the students did really well. Um, and so that's our nervous system. Next is the hormones. I'll be back in a tick.